It's awesome to be in the house of the Lord again. I'm grateful to be before you. I gave you the word of God for this word of encouragement. And I'm so grateful that the last few months, Lord, has been giving me these little series on David on skirt, on encouragement and letting me know that if David can get through some things, I know that you can too, and we can too. And I thank God because when he gives me some verses and he gives me to dwell on those, he's letting me know that he's wanting to make sure that we have confirmation of his encouragement to us. As people of God, we need all encouragement that we can get. All the encouragement that we can get. And I'm so grateful to give you this word of encouragement and this message that he gave me. And if you're watching today on my glad tidings, Lord, this is a ministry not exclusive to this church, but this ministry is also yours also, because I want to preach the gospel and good news to everyone who receives this. And that includes you who may be watching this message today on our broadcast You're our family too. And I want everyone outside of this this church to know that this is your family too. There are some people who can't get out. Uh, I just found out there are some people at at the other gig that their parents, they can't get out, but they look at the mygladtidings.org. And I'm grateful that they, they can't get up, they listen to the messages. So I'm grateful to them. So that's our extended family also. And I can boast and say we have an extended family outside of this house. And I'm grateful that the Lord is blessing us to go to the out, uh, part outside of the, this house and to the other parts of the world. So if you're watching today, this is for you also too. And I want to encourage you today to encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. Say that with me. Encourage yourself. Say it again. Encourage yourself. And I want to start out this with this little story here. I, I think I may have said this one time, sometime, some years before. But one day the devil decided to have a garage sale. Yeah, he, he decided to have a garage sale one day. Not even the devil. He did it because he wanted to clear out some old tools and some gadgets that he, he had. And he wanted to make room for some new ones. Now, and after he set up his inventory, set on all his tables up and all that stuff, his little imps came and helped him and put all the stuff on the tables and they kept bringing stuff and bringing stuff and bringing stuff and he put, put, kept putting more tables out there, putting more stuff and this guy came and he dropped by to see what he had and he and when he set up he saw this big long table of some stuff that looked pretty he thought. There were a tray of table full of tricks and some schemes from his wicked occupation, and each tool had a price tag on it. In one corner was a shining gadget labeled Anger. It was for $250. Next to it, a curved tool labeled Sloth, $370. In Man Search John, he found this one called Criticism. That was went with $500. And there was another one here uh, 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 for Jealousy. It was $640. And there was another one called Envy, and that was $430, but it was negotiable for that one. There was a bunch of other stuff like hatred and, and, and deceiving and all kinds of tools and gadgets on lust. A lot of tools and gadgets, one special table for lust on there. Different prices on there. And then out 
of the corner of his eye, the man went and spotted a beaten up old tool with the price tag of $24,000. Curious, the man asked the devil, why would you offer a worn out piece of junk for such an extravagant and enormous price? The devil said it was expensive because he used it so much. He said, what is it? The man said, the devil said it was discouragement. It's always work when nothing else will. Surely all of us can testify to the truth of that little story. See, we know from hard experience how the, the devil uses discouragement to keep us from moving ahead. And see, when anger won't stop us, when lust can't do us no harm, when, when envy and jealousy finds no foothold in our lives, discouragement always seems to work. It's our enemy's number one tool. See, the dictionary defies this as discouragement. Anything that makes us less confident and less hopeful. Another way to look at it is to say that encouragement is the act of putting courage into someone. Therefore, discouragement is anything that takes courage out of the way. See, that's a dangerous state to be in because discour a discouraged person makes a lot of mistakes if you're not careful. See, you won't be surprised to learn that David's life, and this is David again I'm speaking about today, offers an excellent example of what discouragement can do to a man of God. Now, the story that I'm going to be in is told in 1 Samuel 27 through 30, those chapters. But we're focusing on chapter 30, a passage little known to most of us, but one which perfectly is perfectly relevant today. And as I preach this message, we're going to journey through these verses together. And I'm talking about encouraging yourself. Let's pray. Lord, we honor you and thank you for this time. And we honor you because of this message, Lord. We know, Father, that you are the God of encouragement. You're Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nissi, and Jehovah Jireh. You are great. I am. And we thank you, Father. And I don't preach in my own strength, but I preach in yours. I do hope you inspire each and every one who's listening today on our broadcast and those who are listening today in this house. I pray that you will give encouragement today, and we know that you're with us. In your precious name, amen. amen. The story begins this way. 1 Samuel 27 and 1 says, But David thought of himself, thought to himself, one of these days, I will be destroyed by the hand of Saul. The best thing I can do is to escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will give up searching for me anywhere in Israel, and I will slip out of his hand. See, in those words, you have the x-ray of a discouraged soul. It shows us what discouragement can do to you and me. And discouragement calls David to make an alliance with the Philistines. I've been over this a few times in the past few months. The Lord's been giving this to me about his arch enemy. The once great conqueror of the Philistines now had permission to live under the protection of King Achish of Gath. Previously, David had acted insane from this king, and evidently Achish had forgotten the incident or overlooked it in a light of David's situation. Discouragement can cause you can do some irrational and crazy things. David had been anointed and appointed to be king of Israel, and yet he was living far beneath his privilege. He was a fugitive. He was running from Saul. He had reached perhaps the lowest point of his life and had joined the enemies of Israel. He even volunteered to bring his considerable military skills to the service of the enemy. Again, David was so discouraged that he was willing to fight alongside the biggest enemy of Israel. 
They refused him because they thought that he might, he might have a flashback and battle against him. So he settled in the providence of Ziklag. Now, I want to go sometime after that crazy episode to another chapter in David's life. So this is after he made this crazy chapter with Achish and the Philistines. Now he's going to Ziklag in chapter 30. He and his men. So here's where we go. We're going to start right here. 1 Samuel 31 through 2. And we're going to go through this and we're going to do, go through this together. I'm like, we're going to journey this way. We've already come to a point where David said, hey, I want to fight with my enemies. That's how discouraged he was. Now the Lord brings him back home. And I mean that in a lot of ways. 1 Samuel 31 and 2 says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites has invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great and did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So, so, so while David and his men were, 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 went to the north trying to join the Philistines, trying to join their enemies, trying to join the Philistine army, their own city of Ziklag was unguarded. The opportunistic Amalekites took advantage of the defenseless city, attacked it, and burned it to the ground. Let me tell you something here. Sometimes you think you have one enemy, the devil has all kinds of stuff. He has all kinds of enemies ready to come attack you when you're unaware. They were defenseless, and they burned it to the ground. And worse than that, they taken captive the women and those who were there. From small to great, not only was the city burned, but all the women and the children were taken away. And one thing that I know about, here it is, that the Lord, he knows how to bring you back home. And I take that in a lot of ways, like I said. He knows how to bring you back home physically or mentally and spiritually. He knows how to do it. 1 Samuel 30, 3 through 6 says, as we journey with this, after we journey. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with them lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. They cried like little babies. They cried until they couldn't cry anymore. Anybody been in a place like that? I mean, you cried so hard, and it, it was so bad that it, you cried, you couldn't cry no more. And David's two wives, Ahinoam and the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of the people was grieved. You know, they want, to, they, want to blame, they want to blame somebody. So they blame David. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David, here it is right here, strengthened himself in the Lord his God. What did he do? He encouraged himself. So, so, so David and his men came to the city. And as they came within a few miles of their city, the hearts of David and men must have brightened. And, and you know why? Because their hearts got an uplift. You know why? The thing was, they were discouraged that they hadn't been allowed to fight the Philistines. You know, they're soldiers, and soldiers want to fight. But at least they knew they were coming home, and home meant all their fam familiar surroundings, their family, their wives, their children, everything that they had, all their family. But that bright thought, that bright thought, that uplift, they were looking towards quickly turned black as night. For them, it couldn't get any darker. And there it was. 
the city of Ziklag, it was burned with fire. <laughs> Even in the distance, they can see something was wrong. Smoke rose from the city. But it wasn't the smoke of cooking fires. It was too, too, too much smoke for that. And the smoke was too black. They wondered why no one had come to greet them afar off. Where, uh, where were the wives and where were the children? Weren't they glad to see them? There were no even animals around, no, nothing around. But when they came to the city and saw it, it was like a ghost town, a pile of burned rubble and trashed up. And no voice of survivors. It seems that everything was lost. You know, you know, you know sometimes <laughs> when you're discouraged, it seems that everything is lost in that moment of discouragement. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. He encouraged himself. You see, see, one thing I know, it takes a lot to bring David to this place. But now he's here. His only strength is God. Sometimes in dire situations, it will take a lot to come to that point. But we can come to that point with the Lord on our side. We can. David encouraged himself in the Lord. In the Christian lives, in Christian lives, there will be moments when it will seem, it will seem that all of hell has turned against us and the windows of heaven are closed. There is no answer in such moments of despair and, 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 and discouragement, but we must remember who we are. David was in a strange land at that time, but he remembered that he was a son of God, that he was the anointed of God. Same as David, folks, we are sons and daughters of God. See, David was in the midst of a terrible conflict with those who he was leading, his own people. And yet he remembered this. He remembered that it was the Lord who was his strength and his protection and his guide. David encouraged himself in the Lord. This was a backslidden David, a wayward David, a fight with the Philistine David. Why would God strengthen him? Because God <laughs> is rich in mercy and grace. <laughs> and because David was now completely broken, ready to be filled. And sometimes we think we have to achieve God's blessings or strength. But David shows us another way. David encouraged himself in the Lord. He received the strength and, and, and felt it flow through himself and was Bold enough to ask for it. Sometimes we don't bold enough to even ask God. But we can ask God anything. So he asked it and he received it from God. Before this, he didn't see himself as weak. But after coming home to a burnt out ghost town, David knew he was weak and needed God's strength. Let me tell you, the Lord brought him back home physically and spiritually. See, David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't wait for someone else to strengthen him. He didn't say, well, Lord, if you, if you want to strengthen me, that's fine. I'll just wait here until you do it. No, no, no. David knew that the Lord's strength was there for those who wait upon him. So he encouraged himself in the Lord. God's strength was there for David all the time. And it's there for us too, folks. But now he takes it for himself and will strengthen himself in the Lord as God. Again, David encouraged himself in the Lord. See, this wasn't some, some kind of rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, cheerleader type of positive thinking mumbo jumbo or idea. This was a strength. This was strength of the living God making himself, making himself real in the life and the heart of a hurting man who lost everything and was accountable to the leadership of everyone else. This was strength for recognition, strength for brokenness, strength for repentance, 
Strength for determination to win back what the enemy stole away. Let me tell you, this is the same strength that will raise Jesus from the dead. So as we go on, 1 Samuel 37 through 8 says, Then David said to Abbey Arthur the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abbey Arthur brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake him? And you know David was hoping he'd say yes. You know he was hoping to say yes. David was ready to fight. He was ready to kill. He was ready to cut everyone open, whoever came. If he knew that they took his wife, took his wives, he was ready to say yes. And he answered him. He said, Pursue, for you shall overly take him without fail or recover, and fail and recover all. Isn't it nice when the Lord says to him, go ahead, I give it to you. David was already on his horse ready to go. Yes, after David encouraged himself, he did something very wise. He began to pray. Isn't it interesting that sometimes we cry in bleak situations? We complain when we ought to just pray first. You know, I find out, I find that out every day in my life. When we're in a situation of despair and uncertainty, we need to just pray to the Lord. Just say, Lord, I need your help. Y'all repeat after me, Lord, I need your help. help. Just simply, Lord, I need your help today. Let me talk about Hannah. Hannah, if you you recall, she was in a bitter situation because she was mocked by this this, this thing she called (laughs) Penina. This person, Penina, where the scripture says that she provoked her severely. Meaning she constantly and on a constant basis mocked her because she could not have a child. Penina had children. Even though her husband told her that he loved her and she she was favored by him, she was still discouraged because the Bible says that her womb was closed. So what did she do after enough was enough? She went to the tabernacle to pray. Pray to God for strength. And here it was. And here's the significance here. 1 Samuel 1, 8 through 13 says, So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat up by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now, here's the significant part here. Now, Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. See, see, here is the significant part. Hannah did not cry out to God with a loud voice physically. She cried out in a loud voice of her heart where the Lord can hear and see the biggest part of her. See, if your heart is not in the prayer that you're giving to the Lord, then there's a lot of hot air. Every heart, her heart told God the story. Same with David, the Lord saw his heart heart. She cried out to God in her heart for encouragement and the Lord came through for her. And here comes Samuel later. 
And when she gave back to the Lord, and later in 1 Samuel 2 and 21, she had three more sons and two daughters after that. Church, you who may be watching today, the Lord answers prayer and will come through for you in troubling times. When you need some encouragement and strength, just call on the Lord. There's no toll charge. There's no long distance fees. The service has been already paid for you. Use it. It's free. It's free. Now let me go back to David here. 1 Samuel 36, 9 through 15 says, so David went, and he and his 600 men who were with them and came to the brook Beser where they stayed, who were left behind. But David pursued, and he and 400 men for 200 stayed behind who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Beser. When they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David, they gave him bread and he ate, and they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. And when David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite. David could have killed him right then, but he didn't. Aren't you glad he prayed first? And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion of the southern area of the Cherethites in the territory which belongs to the Judah and of the southern area of Caleb. And when we burned down Ziklag, we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? So he said, swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this troop. So it tells us that David, the 600 came to Brook Beezer, 200 stayed behind because they were too tired to cross the brook. Then they found a young Egyptian who was tired and hungry, which, which they fed who was with the Amalekites when they burned down Ziklag. He promised to take David down to the troop if he would not be killed in any way. And David promised, and he took him down to the troop. Now, here's the climax. Here's the good part, y'all. 1 Samuel 30, 16 through 20 says this. And when he had brought him down, there they were, spread out all over the land eating and drinking and dancing because of the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Then David attacked them twilight until evening until the next day. He didn't let up on them. Not a man of them escaped except 400 men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs were lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Then David took all the flocks and the herds that had driven before those other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. Y'all smile now. David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. Everything that the enemy had taken, David took back. God gave him complete victory because David strengthened himself. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Then David inquired the Lord. He prayed. David did what God told him to do, and David showed unexpected care and kindness to others. He could have killed this young Egyptian that came to say, hey, I'm an Amalekite. Well, aren't you glad that he prayed first because he needed someone to take him to the troop? Let me tell you, as I'm preaching today, I'm encouraging myself because the scripture lets me know what God can do. If I'm sincere in my praying and my heart, I know that I 
that he can come through. <laughs> oh, what a great prayer time we had last Sunday night. I thank, I thank God for that from our hearts. And his presence was strong and confirming when we prayed. Just like David, we can encourage ourselves. You know how we can do that? We can do that by remembering God's plan. We can remember by God's past deliverances in our lives. Who can say you can remember that God re- did something for you in the past? They did, he delivered you. And just remember, if he did it then, he can do it again. See, this is a terrible, terrible spot for people, no doubt. But we can remember all the times when the Lord delivered us out of a spot before. He can do it again. Amen. He did it then. He can do it now. You know what? He didn't deliver me. He didn't deliver you to perish now. The Lord reminds me and he reminds us today to stop giving voice to your in- Stop giving voice to discouragement and start giving voice to encouragement. If he can come through once, don't you know he can come through again? Let's stop repeating the lies of the devil and start speaking the promises of God. I'm I'm learning every day to speak the promises of God. Paul had to Speak the promises of God. David, Moses had to speak the promises of God. Elijah, even though he's a great man of God, he's one of our greatest, greatest apostles, one of our greatest uh, prophets. He got discouraged. But he had to speak the promises of God. We have to stop speaking out fear and start speaking in faith. We need to stop talking about problems and start talking about the solutions. I, learning that. We, we need to find out what the word of God has to say about the situation and then start speaking it rather than your feelings. We need to encourage ourselves because he's going to bring those children back home. Mm, I, I just thought about that. Encourage yourself because he can take back your, you can take back your joy and supply you with peace. You can encourage yourself. You can bring back peace of mind. We can encourage ourselves because he can, he's an omniscient God who, who is all-knowing and knows everything about us and what we need. We can encourage ourselves because he's the omnipresent God, meaning wherever we are in life physically, mentally, or spiritually, he is there with us. I'm so glad I can encourage myself on that. We can encourage ourselves because we have an omnipotent God who is all-powerful. Psalms 46 and 1 says, He's our refuge and strength and ever-present help in the time of trouble. And let me tell you something, and I learned this when I was a kid. My pastor used to tell me this, and I use this. Our God has not lost one ounce of his power. In fact, he's gained more. Our God has not lost one ounce of his power. He's God and God alone. There's no one like him or ever will be. Our God is an awesome God. He's a consuming fire. And I want to encourage you to encourage yourself in him. Someone say praise the Lord. 
and he can. If you can encourage yourself knowing that we serve an omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God who is most sovereign, who knows everything about us and what we need, and who will never leave us at no, we can be encouraged to know we have a Savior just like that on our side. I feel like David sometimes, I have to, when he went against, went against Goliath, he told him, he said, you come with the spear and some weapons. I come with God on my side. He didn't know you can go and you got big brother that's with you. <laughs> oh, don't go. Y'all going to make me preach some more here. Let you know that you can encourage yourself and know that the God of Jacob, Ivan, Isaac, and Jacob, who gave the covenant for us, is on our side. Some of you today may be watching, may not, be, may not know that consuming fire, may not know our Lord and Savior today, one way to encourage ourselves is the first step is asking God in our lives to make it new. If you're in this house and you're saved, raise your hand today. You know Jesus today. Hallelujah. He wants to give you new life and purpose and meaning. And, and, and most of all, he wants to give you eternal life through him. And all I have to do, all you have to do is just pray a prayer of faith with me. Confessing your sins and, and, and accepting him as your savior. You know, that's all it takes to see a new outlook in life. This will be the best and the rest day of your life. I encourage you to do this so you can be encouraged. And I pray that you meet him now because we don't want to meet him later. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. If you're watching today, you're going to pray the prayer of faith that God will save you and come into your life. In this church, we're going to agree with you, agree with those who are outside of these four walls. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for the Father for dying for me, giving your life for me, raising from the dead for me. We thank you, Father, because of who you are. I have liberty now, Lord, and I'm bold enough to say I want to be your child. So please forgive me of my sins and my shame. I want to be your child. And I want to be your servant. Thank you for letting me be your child. And now, Lord, I know I'm saved. I know I've been forgiven. And I'm now your child. From this time forth, forevermore. And I thank you. Amen? Give God a hand praise, folks. Hallelujah.